very good. Okay, very good. Good morning! And welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is Thursday, February 11th, 2021. Episode number 623 of Hard Factor. That's right. It's a full house. I'm Will. We got Mark, Pat, and Wes here. And fellas, it is 2-11 day. Uh, February 11th, 2 11. It's pretty badass. Just a month away, Will. What are you? Oh, from, from 3 11? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's more badass, 2 11 day, which is steel reserves, or 3 11 mm. day? I mean, they're both pretty. One has days. higher gravity, if you ask me, than the other. Well, what? Uh, steel reserves are disgusting, though. But that was that was a badge of honor back in high school. If you were a 2 if you were a 2 11, you know, you, well, you didn't really get to 11s. choose. It, they, the guy came back with what the guy came back with, and you drank I, I was, it. I was, I was opting for two eleven. So I was an OE guy. Oh well, I mean that's tastier. You tastier. could also do OE, um, like their version of high gravity OE was my favorite. They did like a strong old English. Ice was it ice? Yeah, OE I, ice I don't or something. Know. They iced a forty. Or high gravity. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think they I had high. Know. I think it was high gravity <laughs> yeah. OE. OE high gravity. Ice. Yeah. Steel Steel Reserve <laughs> in itself was already trash. Then they had like a higher. Yeah, Steel Reserve was the le- worst tasting by far. Do you guys I, remember? Uh, yeah. Do you guys ever drink Camo Ice? Camo Ice was like camo. Steel Reserve on steroids. Dude, that was that awesome. the one, is that the one at JMU? It was like oh, 11%. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, that one it was, was like a wine one, bottle for That it. one blacked me out real good. I drank oh, yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Fell through <laughs> my closet. Just destroyed it. Yeah, one of those put me on my ass. Camo I, Ice was, was intense. That's how I tore my ACL is a, 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 a 5 OE night. It yeah, 40 a, nights. A, a they, record they record night. Will and, I had good. A, Will and I had a 5 OE night and... He, th- he threw the fifth bottle at my kneecap from point blank. <laughs> I think those were hurricanes, but yes, yeah. I did do that. I think it those were like, hurricanes. He beat me by a couple seconds, and to prove it, he threw, he <laughs> yeah. threw the fifth bottle that at my knee. That was the celebration. Yeah. Was, you were... <laughs> might have been like a foot away, and he just... <laughs> yeah, that was a little over the top. But uh, it was five forties deep. Um, Pat and Wes were on the stereo app today. Mark and I will be... Or on Wednesday, Mark and I will be on there on Friday. Uh, maybe it's going to be a two eleven kind of show with a five p.m. Friday. Tom Brady and Bruce Arians. Be. Yeah, speaking of getting hammered, Tom Brady and Bruce Bruce Arians at the uh, Tampa Super Bowl parade, and the rest of the team obviously as well. Um, never been more proud to be drinking a ton of water and uh, rocking the the Bruce Arians look right now because yeah, he was, they had he a was, good Super Bowl parade. He was hilarious. He had to be helped off the boats. He was happy, drunk. Um, have you been following the water method? Is that water? Because I've been peeing. Maybe yeah. every eleven minutes. This is uh, uh, this is the fifth thirty ounce glass of the day. Uh, I'll be moving on to number six as soon as we're done here. So I'm gonna be gritting it out the last half of the show because I've literally been peeing it maybe to every ten eleven minutes the entire day. <laughs> the pee's yeah, you haven't tough. drank this much water to, since your Best Buy drug test in high school. That's right, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> since you're trying to get out of a test. All right, we got eight action packed news stories for everybody today. Let's get going with another malarkey minute to start it off. That's right, boys. I'm going to try to bring you everything about the Oval Office as quickly as I can. Can I'm going to try to pretend that you guys are all Joe Biden, and I'm trying to keep you awake and engaged with the conversation. So here's the first one, fellas, in news that Joe Zilla will love. Uh, Twitter says that Trump's ban is permanent. Even if he does run for office again someday, Twitter's not going to let him back on. So Joe's got to love that first in the malarkey minute um what do you guys think any 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 thoughts on twitter there man they gotta work this shit out they really got it like if they're gonna ban trump permanently then they need to take all leaders off their platform you know what i mean like i understand banning all controversial leaders yeah pretty much but i understand banning him during that dangerous time but like come on now now he's a dude like he he gotta have permanent bans no good no good they say forever joe's got to be happy though and not so great news for joe zilla though uh, while he ref- he refuses to speak with China yet until rhetorical temperatures cool down. That's the strategy from the Oval with China. Uh, Vlad Putin is not uh, slowing down. He's stepping in to strengthen ties with China. So is the EU striking a massive trade deal with China. Uh, the red giant uh, while the Biden team formulates their approach with the number two economy in the world. The clock is ticking. They're, they're going to have to talk to them. Hey, Will, speaking of China, I want to follow up on something you brought up yesterday with your soft corner of Tesla. Uh, the guy that um, Michael Barry, the guy that the big short character is based on, the uh, yeah, he came out and said that Tesla's Bitcoin play was to distract, distract yeah, from I mentioned, Chinese regulatory issues. Exactly, I mentioned that the Chinese regulatories mm. were mad at them, but yeah, that's who I saw it from, Pat. Yep, the big short guy. So watch out. 
Uh, he's he's big, smart, short, tassel. smart fella. That guy's yeah. a smart fella. Loves Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> he is big time short in Elon Musk these days. Uh, but one thing Biden did do, speaking of the tech world, is kill the deal to sell TikTok to Oracle. So maybe he's not actually speaking with China yet, but I mean, he's putting the TikTok deal on permanent hold uh, until he or temporary hold until he can figure out what to do, which just seems like he's handing China an olive branch. Who's who's running the show? Everyone, all the news people, especially on the right, are saying that that Bernie is running the show. Oh, I think uh, it's definitely commit show by committee. I think it's like, definitely... like who, who is Biden's like Cheney is what I'm asking. Oh, maybe it's Abe not Lincoln. Bur- There's no way it's Bernie. Maybe no, Abe no. <laughs> That's what they know. seem to think that no, Bernie has more those, power. The, those two don't get along. There's <laughs> no, no the, fucking they, way. It's they Bernie. think the Democratic Party is really being no. run by Bernie. Secretary on the right. State, but, no. Blinken, who's his Cheney? Well, have, Blinken has, seems to have a lot of pull. I don't know who <laughs> is actually pulling the strings. Wes, are you saying that because because uh, uh, W was a, a little bit folksy, he had to have a Cheney? Uh, Biden's so old, he needs because the Cheney thing I is mean, pretty unique. Clear, it's a clear line to draw. Yeah, it is I'm, cl- I'm not. I'm not. I'm, not <laughs> it. I'm just make, making sure. Yeah, that's a clear saying. line to draw. He Check needs someone the, to do do yeah. most things for him. I maybe think. it's Kamala. I doubt it, but maybe. Um, I'd say it's much more likely her than than Bernie Sanders. Yeah, she's a more likely candidate. But, but I think it's probably just somebody in his office in in the actual. Yeah. Well, West I don't think wing. the TikTok's an olive branch. I'm about this. I want. I want to make sure they vet that fucking deal. We need to know before Ttiktok comes in. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, just let it be Chinese spyware forever. Hey, I don't know on. what they're up we're, to. We're big TikTok boys now. Follow us on TikTok, Hard mm-hmm. Factor News. Yeah, Hard Factor News. Who cares? There. Give it to someone. Let's. We someone we'll be we'll be loading clips regardless of who owns it. So, That's right. Uh, find us on TikTok. I uh, wouldn't be a malarkey minute without talking about a Biden family member who's making money off the family name. So let's talk a little bit about Frank Biden real quick. Joe's brother, who's running two page ads in the in a, a Florida newspapers for his Boca Raton law firm advertising how close Frank is to Joe uh, in the new administration. Additionally, they had a 2019 Instagram post uh, where Frank uh, said that he brings, quote unquote, an unrivaled personal network of contacts to to the law firm. Frank, uh, Frank looks like uh, <laughs> Joe Biden and Vin Diesel merged together. Yeah. yeah. What newspaper is that like? It's like it looks like an Amish newspaper. Yeah, It's like the <laughs> local Boca Raton newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta they, tell you, do they face merge him? There's no way he looks like that, right? Now you know who he also looks like is John Delaney merged with Joe Biden. Okay. He does look like Delaney. I think yeah. I got a theory here, guys. I think that uh, obviously, if you reach into the office of president, you're a pretty exceptional person, right? But I think that to get there, it's almost necessary to have a sibling that isn't uh, for whatever reason. Because this is there's a long history of shitty presidential brothers. There's like Roger Clinton, Billy Carter, Neil Bush. Is this his uh, brother or brother-in-law? I thought his brother, oh, it's it's Frank brother. Biden. They do look uh, like. Yeah, and and unfortunately for Joe, he not only has the brother, he's got the son as well. Uh, while Joe has said he will not Donald allow Nixon. any company uh, to claim his endorsement, the White House has declined to comment on Frank Biden's claimed presidential endorsement. So he said he, this will not be allowed, but he will refuses to speak about this. Uh, finally, perhaps the worst news of all for the Biden administration on this malarkey minute. The Daily Beast is reporting that the fear inside the White House is that the coronavirus herd immunity in the U.S. may not be reached until next holiday season, fellas, a result of vaccine rollout issues and the new COVID variants. And this will obviously be an issue with meeting the spring date uh, that he promised during his campaign and uh, when he took office. So you thought the new administration would have learned from the last one and not promise an end date, but apparently not. It's like when a cop promises you the, to the to the mother that he's going to find her dead kids killer mm-hmm. well, what do they think we're going to listen to what do they think that we're expected to listen to until next fucking holiday like right the, the, well no he's like superimposing masks onto onto uh old movies he's they're, they're really beefing up the mask thing they're gonna really you know everybody get your vaccine but it seems like herd immunity like we're gonna have more waves of covid it's over it's over summer they're only playing horror movies because all the bad guys have masks already (laughs) who's superimposing masks yeah wait a minute movies uh the biden admin they're literally spending cdc money to do that for like an advertisement yeah for advertisements to get people to wear more masks Mm. that's your tax tax money at work bro uh and while it mostly may be bad news for joe zilla today it's great news for you if you've got credit card debt that needs consolidating 
And I know that all of the boys here on the Hard Factor Pod have needed this vital service in the past. And lucky for us and you, Lightstream was there to walk us through every single step of the way. It's easy with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. Rates start as just as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. That's much lower than the national average uh, on a credit card interest rates, which is 18% or more. Uh, get a loan from $5,000 to $100,000 from Lightstream with absolutely no fees as soon as the same day that you apply. Uh, just for hard factor listeners apply now and get a special interest rate discount. So even cheaper, uh, a rate, uh, on your consolidation there and save even more. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash factor. That's L I G H T S T R E A M dot com slash factor. This here's the disclaimer subject to credit approval rates range from 5.95% APR to 19.99% APR and include a 0.5% auto pay discount. The lowest rate requires excellent credit terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash factor for more information and debt consolidation is really helpful if you're trying to get uh, on the right path financially going forward. Nice. Back mm-hmm. to Pat's point about the you have to have like a sibling or a brother that's like shady. Also, his name's Frank. That that oh, rubs, perfect that, name that, for that rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, that's a shady ass name. Oh yeah. My next story's got a first name uh that you will especially be wary of, Mark. <laughs> Actually. It, to- it, it tops Frank. Oh yeah. It will for sure. Well it all might right. top might not top all versions of Frank, but it tops a, a okay. classic Frank. Yeah, I've, okay. I've avoided him my whole life. Francis? All Franks. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, today is day three of impeachment part two. What happened yesterday in the almost eight hour ordeal? Well, as I said, Wednesday was about evidence and evidence there was. Let's get into it. So big piece of evidence. There was a 13 minute video played of Capitol rioters, uh, which l- led to a notable gasp when the officer pulled out his gun and shot that lady who was trying to break down the door. Mm. Uh it did have an impact in some respects, or at least those are the reports from the room. Yeah, that's a lot an of the intense scene, the one where it's very uh, intense. Scene. In the, in, they're like in the doorway area. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Did they superimpose yeah. masks on those on those people? She was wearing a mask. <laughs> OK, uh, they were trying to stop the blood with masks. Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, it's OK, Mark. Uh, anyway, OK, a lot of this footage hadn't been seen before, guys. Uh, specifically, the most interesting one I thought was Mike Pence getting rushed out uh, by security while rioters were like closing in on him. Uh, and this is, of course, only hours after they're rousing. Hang Mike Pence chant. So if you heard that outside through the, the Capitol walls, I don't know how thick they are. And then you hear they're coming. It's pr- probably a high blood pressure day for Mike Pence. Uh, but yeah, m- more or less for the sure. day was that they were they, they really it was a trial straight up, you know, obviously. But they they went through lots of different evidence. They created a very succinct timeline of like Trump tweeted this. The rioters said this. It was uh, very uh, linear, so to speak. Um, yeah. Well, it, yeah, it all occurred th- over like a four hour window, right? So, well, no, no, it went back uh, all the way back. It's Trump's whole, whole, uh, I think whole they played the exact same package or, or a very similar version the day before, too. They did it as a similar, like, uh, for the first day when they were trying to see if it's constitutional, they played like the same package. It was, it was right. Test. And I got to say, the House, I think it was House members, some House members that were pre- presenting in the Senate. Mm-hmm. There was no there was no tech issues. I was surprised. It was, just, it was a ton of tech. Like the lawyer would be talking. She'd be like, and then Donald Trump said this. And then they have an audio clip to play. Oh, and they're they, pretty smooth. They nailed it. By the time they're in like the main on the main floor, they don't fuck up too often. Yeah. Well, like usually in committee, Democratic, when people are on Zoom and shit, there's fuck ups all the time. That's actually, it. Democratic productions are terrible, though. Like, I agree. They, you know, but like, it's the it's like Wilson's the it's the remote <laughs> level. You know, they've got a few like tech geniuses in the building that's helping them out. It's once you get outside, they don't have like a tech genius per each random location. Right. A lot of times that's yeah. just a dumbass senator sitting right. in, in there on their fucking greasy ass with phone. the zoom. Right. Lucky, and they're lucky just you like, don't get a cat. Yeah. And there's just, there's just like all you see is thumbprints and, and, a, and a like a woman farting who doesn't understand how to exactly. how to like mute herself on zoom. See even fart. though she's a fucking U.S. senator. Uh, all right, guys. Well, they more or less broke down Trump's tweets and tied them to the rioters. They also hammered Trump perpetuating the falsehood that he won the election with perhaps the most damning evidence being that call that he made to the Georgia secretary of state where he asked him to find the exact amount of votes that he needed to beat Biden. Uh, that, that didn't play well. Uh, on a side note, guys, Georgia prosecutors have opened a criminal investigation into Trump trying to meddle with the Georgia election. Um, and what else happened? Largely, the Republican senators that voted against continuing the trial seem pretty checked out. 
Senator Rand Paul spent most of the day tracing the watermark of the Capitol on a legal pad. Uh, Rick Scott from Florida studied a map of Southeast Asia for an upcoming quiz. Mm. Uh, mm. Richard Burr of North Carolina took full advantage of his very, very favorite beverage being uh, one of the only two drinks allowed on the floor during impeachments and spent the afternoon enjoying a number of tall glasses of cool milk. Oh, he was, Wes. He was going nuts on the milk. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good idea, buddy. Strong bones. <laughs> a good strategy. Uh, what else? Big takeaways. Republican Senator Mike Shirky from Michigan uh, faced the press uh, about comments that he made that came out via a hot mic video last week on YouTube mm-hmm. where he called the attack on the Capitol a hoax. In the video, he said, that wasn't Trump, people. That's been a hoax since day one. It's all staged. Uh, That's so- the other thing you get a lot of with remote locations is hot mics. Oh, yeah. Well, dude, this hot mic was th- th- yeah. these guys are like mad at Shirky and they're having a meeting at a diner and the guy's filming the whole thing. Shirky also in that video uh, <laughs> said that he might challenge uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmore to a fist fight. Um, and anyway, he doubled down on his comments. He said, <laughs> yeah, probably a hoax. But he did apologize for uh, his nasty language because that's he didn't want to use that. Um, all right. Over to some more different and uplifting political news for a former Hard Factor guest, personal hero of mine, and bodega illiterate Andrew Yang topped an early poll in the race for uh, mayor of New York City. And uh, that was released on Wednesday. Yang will have to tweak his presidential campaign pillar of universal basic income to meet uh, one of the United States most expensive places to live, starting with monthly payouts at 16000 which is pretty good. No, I'm kidding. He's not well, doing yeah, that. No, not no, doing no that. chance. No right? chance. But he can't. He can't afford to do UBI in a city, can he? I know he can't. That's the yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Be a lot he would of just money. be the fucking mayor. He's just. Gonna, well, I mean, he'd be. I mean, he'd be a cool mayor, probably. But yeah, he's he's gonna want to do that. But right. Yeah. 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 yeah well, anyway, I mean, he, can't he can't afford can't. that. But what he could afford, guys, is a hand painted painting from Paint Your Life. Ooh. Ooh. Hell yeah. <laughs> PaintYourLife.com, guys. One of our sponsors today. Give your loved one. A gift that they won't expect, but they're sure to love in the form of a custom hand-painted portrait from PaintYourLife.com. You choose from a team of world-class artists. Uh, you choose, You want oil? You got oil. You want watercolor? You get watercolor. You pick it. You pick the artist. You pick the medium. You pick the style, the size. You just send in a photo. Bam, they paint that shit. It could be yourself, your children, family, I don't know, a pet. Uh, they can combine photos, too. So, like, if you're a stalker, you can uh, paint yourself next to the stocky. Uh, I don't know if she's going <laughs> to accept the gift, but Different, like, be... yeah, like a, like a, a time lapse of you stalking her. Yeah. They could yeah. do time lapses yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I mean, the artists are, are phenomenal. They can work with whatever you're giving them. So it's pretty good. And <laughs> right now you can get some cash off. If you use our offer, all you got to do is text factor, the word factor to 64,000, uh, and you will get 20% off your first order and free shipping, which is fucking insane. There's no risk. If you hate it, they'll give you a full refund. They're going to get it right. It's not going to happen. You're going to love it. Anyway, text FACTOR to 64,000 for that 20% uh, off. Get the special offer. FACTOR to 64,000. Celebrate the, the moments that matter most. And uh, Dear terms and conditions apply. Mr. and Mrs. Painter, I know this is weird. I'm going to want four quadrants, one for each season of me stalking. Spring. <laughs> <laughs> spring summer fall winter yeah you can't Dude. promise they're not going to call the police but you'll yeah. get your painting right yeah, yeah. when you they get are, out of jail uh, yeah. they are a legitimate business so that's true be forewarned yeah be careful <laughs> did you guys see the uh bruce springsteen ad at the super bowl yeah or oh, the, the jeeps the middle but yeah the middle it was a jeep commercial where he was explaining to everyone that we need to meet in the middle uh, like politically, I think I believe at least you know ideology at least meet as uh, there's too big of a divide right now and people need to calm down and and people and buy a people. jeep, yes, and buy a jeep of course. Right. I mean, and it was, was him. The main point of the well, answer, yeah, right? it's a jeep commercial. It was him like in a church, then driving down the empty roads in like Colorado and Kansas and Oklahoma, like literally in the exact middle of the United States. What do you guys think about it? I think he was trying to sell jeeps. Yeah, I was a little confused because Springsteen's never done a commercial like that before. And I know he's not hurting for cash. I, I didn't really get it. Well, I mean, maybe he is. He needs fucking to, he needs people to buy Jeeps. Well, I think uh, Jeep was trying to get him for over a decade and he finally caved and said, I'll do it, but I have to produce it myself. Turns out someone at Jeep did not do their research and was just thankful that he decided to do it after a decade of trying to woo him because uh, it made national news yesterday or three days after the commercial was launched, that the boss was the drunk behind the wheel. And he got a DUI in New Jersey back in November. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, out, yeah. it's hard to be mad at somebody at his age getting a DUI. Like if it's their first one, right? This is his first. He he doesn't have. He's he's got a pretty clean record, right? I think so. I think there would have been in the article if it was more than one. But right? he, yeah. he was also drunk driving at a time when they didn't give out DUIs. Well, yeah, so he's pretty drunk. Yeah. Turns out the middle is also where Bruce was unable to stay when he was asked to walk <laughs> a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look, it just really makes Jeep look foolish, like you said. It's just it does a national <laughs> a national park service rep. But I think you have a picture of 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 um of Bruce behind the wheel. Do you have a picture of him? There he is. He was driving. <laughs> he didn't give a fuck. He was just drinking. A, a National Park Service rep said that Springsteen was arrested in Gateway National Recreation Area on the New Jersey coast on November 14th. He was charged with DWI, reckless driving, and consuming alcohol in a closed area, so he probably was drinking in the car. I think we have actually obtained an exclusive, a hard factor exclusive of the DUI. Uh, the audio was caught on the trooper's body cam, if we can play that audio. Mm. This is the trooper. How did we get that? I don't know, but you can tell he was hammered because he kept repeating himself. Yeah, how did they not let him off after that? <laughs> he asked. Uh, Jeep yeah, you guys were right. He's done this a lot before. <laughs> yeah. Please don't stop. <laughs> Jeep realized they fucked up so bad that they've now pulled the ad. A spokesperson. Oh, for, no. Come on. It's gone. A sp- well, I mean, it's, it's, you can't fire the real. boss. You wait for 10 years to get the boss and you're just going to pull it. Willy nilly like the that. whole commercial's him driving. A, spokes- <laughs> a spokesperson for Jeep said, "Well, how do you think we felt when one day we thought we had the biggest ad of the year, and the next day we realized we put a booze hound behind the wheel of a car? <laughs> Thank God no one was on the road when we were filming, as we were pretty sure he was drunk the whole time. We just thought he'd spent too much time touring in England when he kept driving on the wrong side of the road." Yeah. Oof. It's tough easy mistake. Tough Jeep. quote. Uh, Jeep reportedly had been trying to. Yeah, I already talked about that. They tried to get him for a decade. Look, I get it. Bruce Springsteen is an icon and a hell of a singer songwriter. I know Bubba's steaming that we even covered this right now because Bubba's got like, you know, he's the biggest boss fan, apparently, of all time. Bubba's uh, just listening to Bruce. He's not even listening to the show, right? Now. He's just listening mm-hmm. to Bruce. Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got the boss blasting from his stereo nonstop like he's a Jersey deli. Uh, speaking of stereos, did you guys mm-hmm. catch Wes and Pat's show yesterday on stereo? Ah, uh, yeah, it was great. Me and you, Will, I guess, Sebastian. Phenomenal. And the listeners. Well, whoa, good. buddy, it was a good one. And one of the main reasons it was is because a large cast of characters you, the listeners, called in and uh, weren't listeners, you were co-hosts. We collectively Ooh, got yeah. to the bottom of the feet and shoes as Dooley brought up the mafia presence in British Columbia. We heard a few great voices and accents and a killer joke from a caller that said the gorilla glue girl didn't get the gorilla glue from the hair section that she went straight to the hardware section uh, that guy was great yeah <laughs> stereo is fucking awesome if you haven't already go to either stereo.com slash hard factor mark stereo.com slash hard factor west stereo.com slash hard factor will or stereo.com slash pat cassidy and follow and subscribe to us we do live shows every wednesday and friday it's totally free and you can call in and steer the show with us and have a ton of fun doing so so remember stereo.com slash our names and i will play a clip from the uh the last show that we're talking about at the end of the podcast today with the, with the funny call in uh so stay tuned nice super fun app uh, there, it, there's a lot of those new uh, right. like talk apps that are trending and it's just they're very fun stereo is super fun yeah uh yeah did you mention the pin tweet sign up through there no you just did though you got you can you hear us Wes? i don't know okay good okay yeah, yeah, uh, the, it's laggy for some reason. Um, all right, guys, a musician Prince Midnight likes to think outside the box. His imagination just runs wild most days, and he's always thinking of ways that he can go harder and more savage than the next guy, and he's oh. really outdone himself with this one. You see, 20 years ago, Prince Midnight's uncle Philippe died, and being that he was Greek Orthodox uh, Christian, cremation is frowned upon, so Philippe died in a tragic car accident. Um, Before he did, he let it be known that he wanted his skeleton donated to the local college for educational purposes. So uh, after a while, Philippe's skeleton was be- became too old and it was time to uh, get a fresh skeleton, but his family did not want to cremate the bones. So Prince of Midnight came up with a plan to better use the skeleton. He paid to have his uncle's bones shipped from Greece. And I have no idea what Philippe ever did to Prince of Midnight, but it probably wasn't good because yeah. Prince of Midnight turned his uncle's torso into a fucking guitar. Here's a clip of him in action. 
No, that just kidding. That was from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> tarantula, baby. Here's a real clip of him playing his uncle. <laughs> Pretty you think cool. he'd be better at guitar? You <laughs> got you like, fucking what a family member. I want to learn on my uncle or whatever. Like, yeah. I want, well, um, also, why is his uncle in a fucking like museum in the first place? I'm confused. He was he, he was donated to a college so they okay. could like he was just like one of those stand up. He was skeletons. a skeleton anatomy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But he yes. demanded to be that. They're, this yes. family is fucking crazy. Well, so well they don't just, cream it. So the huh? one guy demanded. Oh, okay, because of religion. So he yes. demands to be a skeleton. And yes. then to carry on this tradition, the the yes. nephew yeah. makes a guitar. Oh, yes, it's beautiful if you think about it. No, well, Wes, we just talked. We just. Talk, I'm joking. Wes, we just talked about these dark stories. Look, this is actually a happy story. Um, Casey, who called into the uh, stereo show, will appreciate this one. So, in actuality, Philippe was a cool dude who got Prince Midnight into heavy metal. So he did it in honor of okay. his uncle. Um, of the process, he said, "I did a lot of research, and no one has ever made a guitar out of a skeleton. So uh, I did it." Why? You know? I started out consulting with two guys in D at Dean's Guitar Shop in Tampa, but they got cold feet. Anyways, now Uncle Philip can shred uh, for all eternity. That's how he would want it. I'm super proud of the project and how it serves That's to disgusting. honor him and how his life influenced me. So you see, that it's picture's disgusting. He yeah. puts his hand inside the rib cage to play the guitar. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. Very creepy. How do they wash the skeleton? Probably. How do you well, wash the like skeleton? He needs to bleach stuff it. Stuff in it. Yeah. What's up he with the black parts? And those are like the, I don't know, I guess the, the parts that you need to make it, you know, hum, I guess. I don't know. You guys don't understand metal. <laughs> oh, he, I think he painted a little bit. That's the part that gives you the killer sound. Yeah. For <laughs> us, for, for those guitar fans out there, the respect of him for putting it on a Stratocaster neck, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Is that that's what the boss uses, guitar. Bubba? Is that what the boss uses? No, actually, no, the boss is a Telecaster. Yeah, he's a Telecaster, but the Strat neck, I mean, that's that's big time respect. Like is that, that. Is that what your drunk hero, the boss, uses? <laughs> no, I just said. <laughs> oh, I, oh, a Telecaster, right, 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 Telecaster, right. <laughs> we don't bash. For disrespect that, show. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I guess. Uh, yeah, Robin totally West. happy, happy yeah. story, Wes. Yeah. That was a good skeleton story, right? guitars. Yeah. <laughs> all right. No, I mean, yeah, they teach their own. I, would you would you guys ever play a skeleton guitar? Would you keep that in your house? Would you? No. Sure, why not? Not a real skeleton, no. Like he didn't kill his uncle and then make a guitar. You'd have it just yeah. like your family skeleton sitting around. I don't know about that. Give yeah, it, give it, give him a few more years, and he might have. Is what his I'm saying. Is Prince Midnight for Christ's sakes. He didn't <laughs> kill him. He just tracked down his remains yeah. and turned him into an instrument. <laughs> what the fuck? He, he's right. honoring him, Pat. Yeah, he's yeah, he's doing something. That's for sure. All right, we got to move it over to some more weird shit. We're going to Germany, fellas, a, a country that we don't don't go to too often. But when we do, it's always a hit. Uh, we had the sandwich killer way back at the very beginning of the show. That was one of my favorite stories. Um, and then we've had several crossbow killers uh, in Germany. Um, and we have three more wild additions today. Nice. First, in the German corner, just an all-around smart move uh, to get away from a crazy situation. Alexei Navalny's wife, Yulia, has fled Russia to Germany after her husband's arrest and 2.5 year gulag sentence. Good call, Yulia. That's the whole story. She's just getting yeah. out of Russia, going to Germany. So fantastic move. Yeah, smart decision. Maybe your husband should have just stayed there. Uh, Bubba, next. how jacked does Navalny look, dude? <laughs> yeah, Bubba, did you see that? He looked pretty big, bro. I mean, you think he lives? Think that he kind of looks huge. <laughs> <laughs> He's got big ass fucking arms. I didn't expect it. Jesus Christ. God. But the ball has got Bubba shaking in his boots. All right. Yeah. Good thing he's locked up. What kind of supplements you think he takes? <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely on some protein powder, at least. Uh, next, in a bit crazier German oddity, superstar German soccer defender Jerome Boatanks. This guy's like an international superstar for people who don't follow the footy. Uh, his ex girlfriend has been found dead in an apartment. Uh, of an apparent suicide just about a week after the couple confirmed their breakup on Instagram. So very strange situation. Boateng, an absolute superstar. Apparently he was cheating on her. She was calling him out on social media. He's cheating he, on her. Oh, Jesus. He then uh, dude, the guy's a superstar. I'm telling you. And then yeah, and then he he's then like top 25 
like, international like, soccer players. Exactly, like worldwide. Like yeah. this is the guy, the guy's a beast. So, but a lot of yeah. fame for him, a lot of fame for her, I think as well. But it ended sour. Uh, that he breaks up, confirms it on Instagram, and she's dead by suicide like a week later. R.I.P. Mm. to the 25 year old Polish model. She is survived by one son who is. I wouldn't not mind making turning her into a guitar. <laughs> 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 and finally, submitted by the sick minds of intern Cam and listener Charles, comes a story about a 30 year old bouncer from Germany named Mark. Schlatz with a oh, C. This is go. Mark with a C. Well, I, I, I led you into that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. who's well, Mar it's Mark with a C. Very important okay, distinction. Good, good. Who is on trial in Switzerland for killing a 22-year-old British heiress in a claimed erotic game gone wrong. That's what Mark with a C is saying. Uh, Mark goes by the social media al alias Mark Dirty White, which is a, an apparent <laughs> shout-out to low-quality street <laughs> cocaine. So mm -hmm. Dirty White is like shitty cocaine and that's his moniker that's my favorite cocaine. Yep, that's his favorite kind he also has a tattoo on his forehead that says warrior and he wears a stud earring you see him there with the much younger girl that he was uh meeting in thailand uh the 22 year old uh british heiress anna reed they met in thailand a while back and they began began banging in expensive places a lot all over the world and in april 2019 this led them to a nice little quaint place in the swiss alps and uh well, lo and behold, Reed somehow dies of strangulation in the hotel bathroom. Uh, you know, you wouldn't see that coming. You know what, uh, Mark? Mark is, Dirty White. Yeah. Mark Dirty White is the um, the version of that like Russian bodybuilder that has the sex doll without the sex doll. He's actually right, with just, real girls. He's just doing right. it to real girls. Just yeah. real young ladies. Yeah. 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 Tough to explain that situation to the authorities when Warrior is tattooed on your right. Head. No, no. It's even tougher when uh, the hotel guests in the adjacent rooms claim they heard a loud argument right before the death was discovered and mark just walks out into the lobby and is like i think something's wrong with her <laughs> like they come in and the cops are like yeah she's definitely dead totally dead on your bathroom floor of strangulation with you and nobody else in the room besides you so uh, uh you know uh, Mar mark had also stolen her credit card and hidden it uh in the elevator they later found out after a further investigation also he lived off of scam money exclusively why do you do that why do you hide it what did you, why he you like like he like slid it behind like because well, he knew he was gonna get like searched because he just killed someone right and he had probably stolen her credit card right before the right the, uh, the death occurred part of the argument was that he was stealing her funds yeah right, but okay. he says it was a sex game accident uh and he, you know uh, so. <laughs> she kept yelling give me back my credit card they also interviewed his ex who wasn't the girl he killed uh, and she said he definitely has an alcohol cocaine and anger problem but totally didn't kill her he's never been violent at all um and all i can think is this proves the age-old theory that you can never trust a mark with a c you can't mark with a k always always reliable mark with a c you gotta you gotta just it's like an un, it's like an unfinished name just be careful you know totally fair i get really angry when people assume my name has a c in it i'm like fuck you are you nuts no yeah. I'm not a, you're not you're not a you're not mark dirty white yeah mm -hmm. did i try to <laughs> strangle you to death is that why <laughs> yeah exactly what did yeah. i do to you yeah what do you think i'm, I'm mark like, with a c yeah, i get the dirty white thing like be like pat bad cocaine like, yeah wow, it's a weird name it's, like, it's a pretty cool nickname dirty white like, come guys. on all right guys we lost an american hero yesterday oh no it's Bowerheads. Prolific pornographer, founder, and publisher of Hustler, and First Amendment activist Larry Flint has mm. died at 78, unfortunately. Uh, Sorry. Anyone else that. think this guy was long dead already? Me. I was about to say, I thought he was dead like I mean, a, most at least people, a decade ago. Okay. Assuming that most people thought he <laughs> was dead. He was in a wheelchair in the 90s when, he yeah. was, when the movie about yeah. him was coming out. So. The people I'm versus a, Larry Flint with Woody Harrelson, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan, and I thought he was dead, Wes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Flint guys was best known for founding the third best and first nastiest uh, porno mag Hustler Hardcore. in 1972. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Full penetration in Hustlers. That was a big difference. Hustlers was an upgrade compared to the other mags. We're Depending on how about, you look at it. Yeah, not as a youth. Yeah. If you got it early, it was a downgrade. But then as you grew into, you'd grow into Hustler. It made Playboy look like the Teletubbies. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if you were too young and you saw Hustler, you just dropped it on the floor. You're it like, was intense. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it <laughs> yeah, when I was young. A lot of people found out that's, yeah, a lot, that's how a lot of people found out they were gay. 
uh, was, what? I was was not being able to handle a hustler. You see hustler, and you know. <laughs> well, I mean, what is that supposed to mean? Run for the hills. And I just run mean for it. a Playboy. And then you yeah, run. no, you're just like, oh, I'm just not into that. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, hustler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is credited with being the first magazine to include pink shots, which for porno insiders is a term for photos of open vulvas. Uh, they were the first to do that's that. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, that's, fu- that's the intensity, yeah. It's pretty intense, guys. Hustler first blew up in 1974 when Flint published pictures of former first lady Jackie Onassis nude while sunbathing on vacation, which think about that real quick. Uh, imagine if someone published Michelle Obama nudes or uh, Melania. It's by yeah, we need to get every- back to those days. People think that today is crazy. That's that's way crazier. I'm just saying that's that's a bold move. Cutting uh, sure. that issue sold a million copies in uh, just a couple days and put Hustler on the map a big time. And uh, not mm-hmm. only was Flint a pioneer of boners and showing the insides of vaginas, he was also a serious First Amendment defender and champion for which he paid a number of very serious prices. Don't uh, you kind of have to be a First Amendment you're, you're guy, if, guy you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're doing vulva shots? Oh, yeah. The pink yeah. shots. Are, I never yeah. got the vulva shot. Never did it for me. What That's do you mean what you I'm never saying. got the vulva too intense. shot? It was too intense. It's, it's, like, it's, like it's like a surgery almost. It's too much. <laughs> it's like yeah. when Predator takes his mask off. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, he was arrested multiple times for obscenity and fought multiple legal battles defending his right to publish piss porn so, amongst wait, wait other things. So that's over the top. A girl just op- just 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 spreading the vulva, but like hardcore porn is is like is like totally like. Well, I don't, I don't think it's over the top. I don't think it's too much. I just never, just, I just never yeah, understood it. It, it. Exactly, it just doesn't do it. Yeah, like, it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Like it's like it's like it's like looking at one of those like uh, arthroscopic like cameras going down someone's. Exactly. You know, she, what is she getting a colonoscopy? Right. It's weird. What is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you learn a little bit about West today. Uh, anyway, he fought I'm multiple battles. I'm a little he more fought- sensible than you thought, huh? He fought multiple battles. <laughs> no, stop battles. spreading those things. Let's toss. Let's toss a gag on that girl. That's gonna. That's gonna wholesome this thing up real quick. It's less offensive, in some respects. Uh, he, anyway, he fought a ton of legal battles, uh, establishing a ton of legal precedent and protections for First Amendment rights. Uh, Flint was a flamboyant, and uh, with it, with his uh, pornographer. Self and people didn't like that. And on March 6, 1978, during a legal battle related to an obscenity charge in Gwinnett County, Georgia, Flint was shot outside of the courthouse by a guy whose boners made him scared. And that's why Flint was uh, left paralyzed for most of his life, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, he's an American hero. He passed from heart failure and he's no longer with us. So shout out Larry Flint. Thanks for the boners, bud. Yeah. I don't I know what I'm doing after the show. I'm going to be sending Volva shots left and right to <laughs> Wes. You would have never thought Flint, <laughs> Flint outlived. Uh, you after right? i know yeah. he just never would have thought that he beat him again uh i'm a blanket guy, uh a b- blanket guy myself i love blankets i have at least 10 in my house like five in or behind my couch give me a blanket and i'll give you a smile that's what i say any of you guys huge blanket guys oh, they're pretty good medium yeah. who yeah. hates a blanket you know right well what about pillows you guys like bigger pillows native americans them? not fans Right. Good it's point. Certain blankets. Well, they were. They were. But huge pillow guy. Fool me once. P- yeah. So your pillow. Okay, Everybody sleeps with a pillow. Pillows and blankets go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's like sex without a condom. Just a great combo. And good news to any uh, comfort fans it's like a out bed. there. Exactly. It's like a fucking bed. <laughs> good. Good news yeah. to any comfort fans out there. The pillow game is getting a new distributor. As Parkland shooting survivor and activist David Hogg has launched a new pillow company to compete with Trump supporter Mike Lindell's My Pillow. Oh, thank God. Finally, it's called you know, good somebody pillow. stepped up and did the right thing and created a, a competing company so that po- people could buy based on politics. I mean, yeah, finally, they did the right thing. You know? Will's pretty worked up about this. Hogg, who is currently enrolled at Harvard, posted several announcements about his news company with one caption. This pillow fight has just gotten very real. Uh, so he built a spite company like in Curb Your Enthusiasm. What's your problem with that? That's funny, right? Yeah. But- Remember the last season spite of mm-hmm. Kirby Enthusiasm when they did they do spite comp. What's spite my stores? problem with this? Yeah. People who base their purchases on fucking personal politics are the only people who should be put on like the no fly list. Like the Patriot Act <laughs> should be used just for people who take politics so seriously that they change which company they buy a fucking pillow or a can of beans from. That's my problem with this fucking situation. What was the what can about, of like, beans thing about? Or something? What was the can of beans thing about? Goya was horrible. That was. A, I don't want to go back to those times. I don't. I don't like how the. Goya, I don't like how the pillow. 
I don't like how the pillow wars are dragging me back to those times. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, like, look, as you can see, um, uh, Will is not very upset, as and neither or is, is very upset, and mm -hmm. so is Cam Kasky. Uh, mm -hmm. Cam Kasky, friend of the program and former guest, who we are trying to get back on specifically to talk about this, is very upset. It seems Kasky, who is also a Parkland survivor and social influencer and activist, tweeted several times about this. Taking it to the internet, here are a few of those tweets. Uh, he says, to those of you who marched, donated, lobbied, and called for change, I'm so sorry. This is what it turned into. This is embarrassing. And he followed up like with several things. And one of them was, but welcome to America. Everything ends up a grift. Uh, we'd have to ask him exactly why he's so mad, but it seems to have <laughs> to do with him. He was shocked by the Lincoln Project, too. <laughs> right. It seems to have to, have, to, have to do with him thinking Hogg, who was uh, one of the co-founders of March for Our Lives movement with Kasky, who also founded that. Uh, something with him making money off a good pillow, maybe off of his fame. He might think it's a cash grab. Not sure. Again. <laughs> oh, it's totally not. It is. I know, but it's, <laughs> I understand what I'm saying is that ex what exactly is triggering that's, him? That's that's it. That's yeah. it. It is. Because he's. Yeah. he's straying from the fucking whole thing. He's going with the started. Trump model. I'm going to yeah. sell Trumpy bear. I'm going to well, sell MAGA hats. I'm going to sell pillows. I'm going to lost like, his vision. Yeah, I think their uh, their their work is not done with with what they want to do with gun control. Right. And uh, he's that. That's probably why he's pissed. OK, he's, we'll come back on the show, Cam. We almost got you to tell us which Disney TV star you were stooping. I think we can get him to spill hmm. it next time. By the way, did you hmm. see Lindell, the My Pillow guy's latest crazy claim uh, this week was that the Capitol stormers were drugged by Antifa sluts yeah. taking it to the Internet one last time. Bubba, can you hmm. get that quote up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This so is a great it. one. Uh, this is the rioters were hypnotized by Antifa temptresses who hid psychoactive drugs in their vaginas. Uh, if you look at the video, many Whoa. of the rioters had crazy look in their eyes. So those goddamn Antifa sluts. Yeah. Lindell is a, uh, a recovering crack addict. So he, <laughs> he, he yeah. how is this guy a fucking millionaire? How does he have, how is he a millionaire? We're not millionaires. I uh, he started my pillow. David Hogg is going to be a millionaire too. It's just fucked up. I just think that the whole thing is like, you know, people taking advantage of of insane people who will buy shit based on politics. It's just fucked up. The my pillow guys fucked up too. It's like you like you just take like these hard insane political All right. stances. All right, well. Yeah. All right, well. He's one of the creepiest. We got guys you worked up. All right. Well. Um, all right. Last story of the day. Guys, I love pancakes. Made some chocolate chip Kodiak cakes this morning, as a matter of fact. I'm getting those gains. TB12 Nutrition, right? Um, I don't know why I'm not allowed, but they are delicious. Yeah, um, delicious. I don't know why I'm asking uh, this because I can see it in your faces, but you guys are pancake guys, right? Does <laughs> this yeah, look I like mean, a face that turns out a flapjack? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, okay, quick question. French toast, waffle, or pancakes for the rest of your life? Oh, fuck. Definitely not French toast. Um... Fuck, man. Pa pancakes. 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 Okay. pancakes. Okay. Anyway, one of the most famous brands of pancakes and waffle makes All of them. Is waffles are good, is com though. Yeah. Yeah. Waffles. Um, it's good. completely changing waffles, its name. Um, PepsiCo is Aunt Jemima right in the middle of Black History Month, a move I find highly controversial, uh, but something PepsiCo <laughs> says is a step in the right direction. Um, little did I know that the wonderful pancake box I came to know and love was actually racist. According to CNN, Aunt Jemima was a racist character of a black woman stemming from slavery. Je slavery, Jesus. Um, I also thought that she was nice. just a, uh, I, I thought she was just a warm, welcoming face on my delicious pancakes and syrup. Anyway, they are firing Aunt Jemima um, from her spokesperson duties and replacing her with the delicious name Pearl Milling Company. Oh, mm. that's mm. what I think of when I think Milling. of a classic pancake is a that, mill, yeah. a paper mill. That's a yeah. fucked up. That's a fucked up pancakes. backstory they gave to Aunt Jemima. Fucked yeah. up backstory. Did same similar with Uncle Ben though, right? They canceled Uncle Ben too. Oh yeah, I'll get to that. Apparently, oh, they were the original company that started the mix until they got all racist and named the mix after the song "Old Aunt Jemima," which is an 1875 song from a show that featured performers in blackface who wore aprons and bandana head headbands. See, not good. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so the new one, that picture, uh, they, they replace a factory instead of Aunt Jemima's inviting face. It's almost like they're trying to kill off the brand altogether. Guarantee you sales are going to tank. Yeah. P P Pearl, look, Pearl Mill pancakes, these aren't going to sure. sell. Yeah. They, they, they're going to taste, they automatically taste worse when, you, when, you, when you're thinking, oh, I'm eating a Pearl Milk pancake. Right. Like, so Aunt Jemima, um, Uncle Ben, the cream of wheat guy. Um, and uh, even Mrs. Butterworth have been fired by white CEOs in corporate America, and I think it's uh, fucking sad. 
Um, you know, Paul, you know, Paula Dean's, Paula Dean's house has got so many stocked up Mrs. Butterworth and Uncle. <laughs> she's got Whereas all these you, stocked up. She's got the pictures. Yeah, on that's the cream of wheat guy. What is that about? You know that Aunt Jemima is absolute was ra- uh, was a racist character. Absolutely. It, and was super exploitative. It seems like it in hindsight. Yes, it looks like it, Pat. I, and, and that's not good. Right. Well, they fired seemed, her. Wes seems mad. <laughs> they didn't yeah. fire her. She's dead. She's been dead. She, the lady oh. that the Aunt Jemima, you know, has been dead for like 100 years. Look, I. I'm She's I'm with fired from beyond the grave. Though. I'm with Will. Yeah. It's stupid to buy your products over uh, like political issues, but I'm definitely not buying products that I now found out are racist. <laughs> well, you're not going to buy old mill pancakes either. You yeah. look, I can't even remember the name. I've, I've just heard it five times. I don't even know what it is. It, it's it's not going to stick. Listen, I'm in the position where if you tell me it's racist, I got to believe you. Right. Um, <laughs> so that's going to do it for hard. State it out loud on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, trust me. I, I trust you. And that's going to do it for Hard Factor. Hey, just a reminder, if you have, uh, have not, please follow us on all social media at Hard Factor News. Check out the YouTube channel. We are going to be having a lot of new clips coming soon. So please give those some love. Comment on them. Share them. Like them. Really helps us to be able to keep delivering all of you this free content. Check out HardFactor.com for some merch. These hoodies are actually actually very high quality mm. very nice give our sponsors so, some love but most importantly have a great fucking day